<clears throat> okay, so right now I'm just quickly run home from work doing my lunch break to quickly record this video of you guys. So um, I'm just gonna get to it. <laughs> and if I rush something, please let me know. So I just noticed um, on the controllers that we copied from the feed, we forgot to delete the unused attributes here. So I'm just gonna select both controllers and select all these things to what we call foot adders. There, right click, sorry, and say edit and delete attributes so we don't have that crap anymore oh and you probably need to unlock this one before you can delete it all right perfect so what i want to do in in this video is show you guys how to do this kind of stretchy spine and you can see i've already set it up here um but i'm quickly going to break that now so if we say node editor it's sorry i, I just switched screen so it's a little bit smaller than i'm used to so I'm just going to kill all of this stuff here. Delete that. Delete the curve info node. Okay. So we select this now. You can see it's no stretch. <coughs> so, okay. Um, what actually happens when you stretch uh, the spine is that you're, you're having two, con two, two joints that are basically skinned to your curve and that curve has from the beginning a certain length so if i hide the character right here uh, let's move this out a little bit so it has a start length and as i'm moving my controller since it skins one it actually gets longer and we need to get that length and we're going to use that length to multiply oh well we're going to divide it with itself with its own length which means that if you divide something with itself, it equals to one. If we then make it longer and we divide the length with the new length with the original position, what we'll get is a point or one point something, depending on how far we're dragging it out. And that length or that one point something we're gonna drop into our scale X in order to scale it like so. Uh, so that's the basic point of making a stretchy spine. So let's um, let's just do that here. If I go in and I'm selecting my spine, then what I want to get, as we talked about before, the information is not on the transform node. The information is always on the shape. So let's try and put that in here. So I'm just going to clean up my graph so we have the same. So I'm just going to add that in here. I only have my shape. Also, if you select these things and press one, two, three, you can expand them. I usually just have them like this since. I don't like to find them here. I, I go into the connection editor, so I'm just going to have it like this. <coughs> so the next thing I'm going to do is, uh, sorry, I just came from Unreal, so <laughs> I have a habit of right clicking. Uh, but if I tap here and then I write curve info, you can see there's a node here. I'm clicking on that, enter. And then I drag and drop just like we've been doing before. Let's see if we can go here and say show non keyable. And the one we want is the world space and show non keyable input curve. So now you can see that I get a length here. Make sure, because right, the problem right now for me is that my length is not correct because I want the original length right now. So because I already moved my controller, the curve length is not in the original, will not be true to the original creation. It is now though, because now I moved both of my controllers to how I started my curve. So the next step <coughs> is to take that information and drop it into to a multiply and divide node. So a multiply and divide node has different kinds of operations. And we should see them here under the attribute editor. So you can see like what kind of operations we can do. We can do multiply, divide or power. We're not gonna use power in this tutorial because it, it uh, involves a little bit of math uh, that's that's a little bit different and I, I want this to be really basic but just know that there is another way to do squash and stretchy spine and the way we're going to do it here and I might do a tutorial on that later but for now we're just going to keep it as simple as possible so take the curve info and just drop that arc length drop it into the input one and what we're going to do now is go into the multiply and divide node and set this to divide I'm going to hover the selection or what do you call that? Highlight this 
the original length and just paste it down here, which means that the output of this one, now this number is dividing with this, and the output would be one. So if I take this output here, select all my joints, except for the last one. We don't want to scale the last one. So if I select that, put that in here by clicking the little plus sign, I take my multiply and divide node. And by the way, let's name these things. So let's call this uh, spine, it's actually M spine, and then underscore info, it's a good name. Let's take this one, call it M spine mult. Next thing <coughs> is that I'm gonna drag and drop on top of this and I'm gonna select all these and put them in here and this is where you'll actually notice as well if your <laughs> joints haven't been oriented correctly because we need to take the output of our multiply and divide node and drop it into our scale just as explained earlier so if I take that and put it into scale x scale x scale x scale x and scale x so that should be all of them let's see if i missed any we'll notice in a second so right now if i take this one i drag it out you can see my joints are now getting that division math that we've been doing and adding it into our scale x so that's the first part <coughs> the next thing that we uh, promised we we're going to talk about is how to quickly set up the rotation because if you have a, a spline, it doesn't really have an up vector yet. So it doesn't know where to rotate. And you can see my joints are not rotating when I'm rotating my controller. And obviously we want that. So the easiest and simplest way, simplest way to make a, let's just save over that. So the easiest way and simplest way to make a spine uh, rotation on a spline is by just creating two locators here. So I'm just gonna create one, create two, duplicate the first one and I'm going to call it M spine A up back lock so up back up back to lock and I'm going to call the next one for B so that's basically just you can call them start and end or whatever you want that, there's no rules uh, okay so next thing is I'm not going to scale them I'm just going to scale their, their local size so, which means that I'm just basically scaling their shape I'm going to take the A1 and snap it to my root. I'm going to take the B1 and snap it to the end of the spine. Sorry, like so. So I'm holding down V to snap to points. I select both locators and drag them upwards. Because now my spine will have these to aim for. So if I go in here and I select my spline. So if you basically drag over all your character, the first priority would always be an IK handle. Just as if I drag here, I won't be selecting joints. And if there is no if there's no IK handle, the next like if I drag here over my polygons and my joints, it'll be joints that are the next priority. So there's a priority list naturally done by Maya. So I know that when I just drag here, I'll get my IK handle. Unless I've hidden it obviously, but I haven't. So under the IK spline here, you can see I think we need to go under solvers like so and then under advanced and we're going to do advanced twist and we're going to do scene up sorry not scene up we're going to do object up start end because we created like a start and up end object <coughs> so we're just going to take these two here i'm going to take that name from my this is my a so that's underneath here i'm going to select that one again put it underneath a take the next one put it on the b there we go and now I'm going to take my, so what I want to do is parent this up vector underneath my control. So it's moving with it. So now the spine knows where to aim. And you can see, I don't know if you can see this, maybe I need to create, yeah, you can see it. You can see that the joints are rotating now. And the same thing goes for the back here. Let's see if we can see that. Ah, stop. Ah, oh, sorry. I need to parent this underneath. So that's probably why we couldn't see anything, but let's just zoom in here a little bit and you can see like now we're rotating. So that's basically how you, how you set up the easiest way of setting up advanced twist spine. Uh, <coughs> so that was the second part. I can't remember if I'm doing them in the right order. 
Okay, so last part is to create some sort of squash and stretch. And for this, I'm just quickly gonna uh, create a proxy geometry that we can see the result on. So we sort of like can, I don't wanna start scanning yet, so I'm not gonna do it on, on the creature yet, but I'm just gonna do something like this. You guys don't need to do this, but I'm just gonna quickly model something here. I'm just gonna go mesh and then say, us, let's see here. Let's just try and smooth that once, right? And then I'm just gonna hit edit history and freeze it. Great. So now we have like, oh, looks like my freeze is not reset. Try and hit apply there, so you can see like a reset here. Got nothing but my shape nodes. So that's great. Um, I don't care about my pivot point. So now I'm just gonna select the joints. Like so, select my my kind of sausage body here, <laughs> and move that out. And you can see, okay, it scales. So one thing you'll notice is that the back here is also scaling backwards. That's because you want your scaling, where you basically want all your scanning to be done to this joint instead. But we're not gonna do worry about scanning yet. Don't worry about it if if you do this test. It's it's okay that do, it does that right now. So. <clears throat> Now, what I want to do, or what I want to, what I'm, what I'm not liking about this is that when, when I make it shorter or longer, there's not really any change in volume. And what we, this is where we could use the power math, but I don't want to go into that right now. Um, it's gonna be maybe we're gonna do like an upgrade video where we can upgrade the rig to become a lot more sophisticated. But for now, let's just try and and get through this the simple way, right? So. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select this again and we're gonna go into the node editor. And let's close this connection editor down. Node editor, and just so if you guys have cleaned this one out, I'm just gonna start over. So I'm gonna clean everything out by using this thing here, clean graph tool. And I'm gonna select my spline again and I'm gonna add that in here. And I need, let's see here, I think I need the shape, yeah. And if you take the output connections of that, we can still get the the info node. And we can also see the multiply and divide node we had here before. So I duplicate that. So instead of calling this spine molt, uh, I wanna call this spine stretch. And I'm gonna call the other one well kind of squash. It doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna drag my arc length into that. But this time, I wanna get it into the input too. And this is important that you switch these two around. In this case, in the first case, I dragged it into the, sorry, the arc length into the multiply one X, as you can see. In this case, I wanna take it into the multiply two X because we want it to be opposite. We want, as our character gets longer, the stomach shrinks in. And as he gets fatter, oh, that's this, okay. Sorry, a small interruption. So if you get shorter, you want your characters to get fatter, basically. So kind of volume preserving. So we're gonna do something very linearly, but later, as I said, like we, we can upgrade it, but not for now. Right now we just try to get some of, some of the basics down. Uh, so I have the new multiply divide node and I switched it around. So I put in my info my arc length into my uh, 2x and I have I can do like before it's already done for me here but just if you guys don't I set this one to divide I multiply the original length in here and now I do exactly as before I select all my my spines and technically I only want this kind of shrinking I don't want it to happen on the rib cage but I want to have I want it to happen between the rib cage and the and the and the pelvis because that's that's where there's basically no skin so when he stretches out that that will sort of go in so i'm probably like gonna go with this joint this joint maybe this one i actually like the idea of just using the two first it doesn't really matter i'm gonna do with three first so in this case i'm just gonna load them in in the left oh sorry the right side i'm gonna take my squatch molds and load it into the right side i'm gonna take the output x still working on x channels channels and i'm gonna just drop that into my other scale channels that I'm not using. 
So because the operation is opposite, now you'll see that as I'm getting longer, that value is actually s actually getting fatter. <coughs> and um, the last thing I want to do, because we could make an on-off switch and it would be pretty easy for us, um, but we're not going to do that now. We're going to keep everything super basic. And it is quite nice for animators to have stretch on the on the on the character so when they actually move the hind legs around it won't pull the legs with them so the legs will stay in the same position but what we do want to do in order to help them is we want to show them how much they're actually stretching their character so what we're going to do here is i'm going to select this controller the front controller i'm going to say edit add attribute as i just did and then i'm going to say stretch vector <coughs> And I'm not going to give it a minimum or maximum because this will just be a channel. So I'm just going to make it a float value. Uh, and the next thing I'm going to do here is really simple stuff. So I'm just going to take that controller and add it to my graph here. And then now comes the trick to find that. This is a little bit stupid about a graph, but maybe there's a trick that I don't know of how to add them. So I kind of just want to go into my outliner here and just find it. So I'm just going to select that here. I'm going to close this one down. I'm going to select it here. And okay, it's, so it's right here. And now I just want to take my stretchy mold and just add that. So I take the output of that output X into the stretch factor. And now you can see as the animators are working, they will know how much they're actually stretching the spine. So they know that when they're going too, they're going too far out or too far in, it's turning unrealistic. But basically that gives them an idea of how much they're pushing the boundaries but yeah that's it for the spine i i hope you guys learned a lot i'll, I'll continue i think the next stuff is the neck i can't remember neck ahead but uh yeah good luck with this and please just uh, send me a mail if there's any questions cheers guys Okay, so on the last note, right before I end this module, I just wanted to mention that if you head over to my website on ManoNM, you can sign up your mail um, to, to just stay informed. And whenever I finish a tutorial, I'll send it out. Uh, it's really, I hope that that can encourage people to do more rigging, but also you'll stay on your toes. And if you get too far away from it, you'll start to forget it. I won't give your mails away. That's not the point. So it'll just stay with me. And the idea is that you will receive updates for tutorials so it'll probably be like around every month or so whenever whenever i do whenever i make a tutorial i mean i usually do these this quadruped rigging series is supposed to be one video a week kind of thing uh so i'll probably like just update every time i have maybe four of them roughly uh but yeah just head over to manoanim.com and make sure you sign up there cheers guys